Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this Tronxy Crux One Mini 3D printer. It's the same size as the Prusa Mini, as the print volume is 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters. I have a Prusa Mini Plus, and it works fine, but the price for the Prusa Mini Plus has increased recently. To get a semi-assembled Mini Plus with a filament sensor and the shipping cost, you need to pay over $530 as the Tronxy Crux One is only $179, I don't expect it to work as well as the Prusa Mini Plus, but for just one third of the price, it would be interesting to see what this printer can do. Let's go through the features really quickly. It has a 32-bit board and silent stepper drivers on the X, Y, and Z axis, as well as the extruder. The extruder is a direct drive, and the motion system on the X and Y axis has metal wheels. It has a filament sensor and a 2.4 inch touchscreen. You can choose to have a glass bed or pay $10 for a PEI spring steel sheet. It also supports both a micro SD card and a USB drive. The hot end of this printer can reach 275 degrees Celsius with a 110 degrees Celsius heated bed, so we can expect to print some high temperature filament like nylon. It may not be able to print polycarbonate, but should be able to print some polycarbonate blend with carbon fiber, which requires a slightly lower printing temperature. The features seem pretty nice for this price. I would like to thank Tronxy for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the X and Z axis, the base, a filament holder, and some tools. The assembly is easy. Just attach the X and Z axis to the base, tighten the screws, mount the filament holder on the side, use the clips to secure the glass bed, and finally connect one Z stepper motor cable. Make sure the voltage of the power supply is correct, and we can now turn on the machine. Let's start with Auto Home. It's now homing the X and Y, and finally the Z axis. The Z limit switch is a spring-loaded screw, and the height can be adjusted easily. I will then manually level the corners of the bed using the paper test. Adjust the knob underneath to let the nozzle slightly scratch the paper, and do the same to all four corners. Do another one to two rounds to make sure the height is perfect. Now, we can preheat the nozzle and load some filament. Once the nozzle is heated up, push the filament up and go through the filament sensor. The Bowden tube is just used to guide the filament to the extruder. We can use the move extruder arrow to feed it until you see something coming out from the nozzle. Okay, we can start with something simple, so a quick calibration cube would be good enough to make sure everything is working. I just used the sample filament to print this cube, and the surfaces and layers all look fine. The dimensions are also accurate. Next, I will go to Cura and set up this printer. Select Add Printer, and since this printer is new, I can't see a profile for it, but I can just use any similar size printer and make some changes. I think the King Rune KP3S should be similar enough, as it has the same 180 by 180 by 180 print volume. Just rename it to Cruise 1, and all we need to change is the retraction, since this extruder is a single gear extruder with the 1 to 1 gear ratio like the Ender 3's direct extruder. I've used the same 2mm retraction distance and 45mm per second speed. Let's save this profile, and we can start slicing some models. I will start with the 3D Benchy. Somehow the text on the bottom of the Benchy didn't stick well to the bed. However, the purged filament, the skirt, as well as the calibration cube did not have any bed adhesion issues. I'm pretty sure the bed is perfectly level and the Z offset is correct. I stopped the print and I found that the anti-scratch coating is too thick, and this may be what is affecting the adhesion, so I just applied a thin layer of glue and tried again. This time, it sticks perfectly fine. The print looks good, the layers look fine, but the stringing is more than expected. The cooling is good, and the bottom of the benchy also looks perfect. 
to confirm whether the stringing is caused by the sample filament or my retraction settings, I will do a simple stringing test. It strings just like the Benchy, so I will use my normal Overture PLI filament to reprint the stringing test. The result is pretty good, so I think the retraction settings are fine. I will reprint the Benchy to confirm this. The Benchy looks much better. I will just keep the same settings and do some more test prints. I will now print something large. Let's print this Captain America model, and as the maximum Z height is 180, I will try to max it out. However, the printer profile of Kira won't let me do that, so I will just make it 179mm and it seems okay. It will take 11 hours to finish this print. It prints very nicely until the last few millimeters when the z-axis cannot move up anymore and all the final layers are compressed, making this a flat-headed captain. It almost looks like his head was cut off by a shield when it came flying back. So I will resize this model to 175 millimeters and reprint it. This time it looks good, so I would just assume the safe z-height of this printer is 175 millimeters. I can think of several ways to get around this and still make it 180mm, but I will talk more about this later. Besides the maximum height issue, this print looks perfect. Next, I will print a large trash can. It seems safer to print it at 175mm. Normally, printing a solid model at this size is going to take two days, but since I will use it as a trash can, I can just use vase model to print a hollow body. I will first set the layer height to 0.3 millimeters, and then search for contour to bring up the spiralized outer contour option. Now, it only takes five hours to print this trash can. The layers look good, the bottom is perfectly flat, and the silver PLA trash can is overall really beautiful. Then, I will try to print this fidget spinner with PETG. This model is mainly used to test the clearance, and I've printed this model many times before with PLA, so let's see if using PETG filament also works. The result is okay. It's not as smooth as those printed with PLA, but it can still spin freely. Next, I will try some ABS to print this crate. I will set the nozzle temperature to 250 degrees Celsius and the heated bed to 100 degrees Celsius and turn the cooling off. This model will take six hours and 12 minutes. As I apply glue to the whole print bed, it's stuck perfectly. There's just some stringing, but that is expected when using ABS to print a model that requires a lot of retraction without cooling. I also printed this model again with PLA, and this crate is the best that I've ever printed. The cooling is perfect, and there's no stringing at all. As this printer claims the maximum nozzle temperature can reach 275 degrees Celsius, I will try some nylon to print this simple nut. I dried this nylon filament two weeks ago, and it has just been sitting around since then. I can hear some fizzling noises when it's extruding, as nylon filament is extremely sensitive to moisture, but I don't want to dry it for 6 hours just to print a 30 minute nut. The result is still okay. It fits perfectly with the other part I printed previously. Finally, I will design a filament mount in Fusion 360, as I want to move the filament mount from the side to the top. I will use polycarbonate carbon fiber to print this mount. 275 degrees Celsius may not be good enough to print all kinds of PCCF filament, but I tried to print this blend at 280 degrees Celsius and had good results, so I think 275 degrees Celsius should also be fine. <laughs> 
Surprisingly, the result is excellent. The print is perfect, and I can use it to mount the filament roll on top. The filament feeding angle is much better, and I can get rid of the Bowden tube guide. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons, starting with the pros. One, the assembly is super easy. You just have to mount the X and Z axis onto the base, mount the filament holder, and connect one cable. Two, the build is solid, the print quality is in line with most other 3D printers, and it actually prints pretty well right out of the box. The part cooling of this printer is very good, as the part fan is a 50-15 blower. I always upgrade weak cooling fans of other printers using this blower. Three, the maximum nozzle temperature can reach 275 degrees Celsius. Besides the standard PLA, PETG, ABS, and TPU, you can also print some high temperature filament like nylon and polycarbonate carbon fiber. However, some PZ blend filament that require 300 degrees Celsius cannot be used on this printer. If you are going to print PCCF on a regular basis, I would recommend changing the PTFE tube inside the heat break to a Capricorn tube and a hardened steel nozzle. By the way, it uses standard MK8 nozzles. 4. The Z limit switch is a thumb screw, so it's easy to adjust the height when doing manual bed leveling. 5. It is 4 TMC2225 silent stepper dry bars on the X, Y, and Z axis and the extruder. Unlike some other budget 3D printers that only have silent stepper drivers on two or three axes. Six, the metal wheel motion system is nice, and even though I can't see any significant advantages in the print quality compared to rubber wheels, they shouldn't be worn out at all and should also require less maintenance. Seven, unlike other mini 3D printers that have an external power supply and a detached filament holder, which may be a bit inconvenient when you need to carry the printer around and would also use up more space on the table, this Crux One has the power supply inside the base as one piece. Now for the cons. One, there are two print surfaces available for this printer, the glass bed and the PEI spring seal sheet for an extra $10. I highly recommend the PEI sheet because if you use the glass bed, you need to clip it on the heated bed, making the already small print surface even smaller. 2. The direct extruder is lightweight, and it has a smaller heat sink and a longer heat break with the PTFE tube inside. It would be better to use a bimetal heat break so this printer can print at 300 degrees Celsius, which is a huge advantage for a printer at this price point. 3. The extruder gear is a single gear, and the filament tension cannot be adjusted, so it would be better to use a dual gear and add a screw for the user to adjust the spring tension. Four. It has an X-belt tensioner, but no Y-belt tensioner. After months of printing, you still need to adjust the tension of the belts, and this applies to both the X and Y axis. Five, the maximum Z height is supposed to be 180 millimeters, but when I max out the Z height to print this 179 millimeter Captain America model, the Z axis reached the final 3 4 millimeters and couldn't go up anymore. I can switch to a PEI print surface, which would give you another 2mm, and switch to some better silicone cylinders to replace the spring. And adjusting the Z-limit switch to be lower can also gain another 2-3mm to, to make the usable Z-height almost 180mm. But generally, I would expect to see a 180mm Z-height machine to go a little more than 180 rather than less. Six. Leveling a tiny bed like this is easy, but some users just prefer auto bed leveling. It would be nice to leave a space for a BL touch mount on the X carriage plate. Seven, there is no printer profile in Cura, which may be frustrating for beginners, but you can just select a similar printer with the same print volume and adjust the retraction settings. In conclusion, this printer may not be as good as the Prusa Mini Plus in terms of the overall user experience, documentation, and some of the fine details, but it is definitely worth the price. Normally, you won't expect to see features like silent stepper drivers on all axes, a touch screen, a lightweight direct drive extruder, filament sensors, belt tensioners, and USB drive support on a printer in this price range. The Prusa Mini Plus is good, but it now costs over $530, so I don't think it is actually three times better than the $179 Tronxy Crux One. I think Tronxy has done a lot to make this printer competitive, but they could move one step further, slightly increase the price, adjust the cons, and add the following upgrades. One, a bed leveling sensor. 
It can be something with a low cost, like an inductive sensor or a 3D touch, and not something super fancy, but it can still get the job done. 2. Use a double-sided PEI print surface as the default option. A glass bed does has its own advantages, especially if you print something that requires a glue stick. However, a double-sided PEI sheet with one side that is a textured PEI and one side that is smooth PEI would be perfect. It can also max out the X and Y printing area. 3. Use a titanium and copper bimetal heat break that allows printing at 300 degrees Celsius. This is going to bring the printer to the next level. 4. Use a dual gear to replace the single gear in the extruder and add a thumb screw to adjust the spring tension. 5. Move the filament holder from the side to the top to allow smoother filament feeding. The filament sensor can be moved on top of the extruder or just be mounted at the filament holder like the Ender 3S1. I think most people would like to pay an extra $30 to get all these upgrades, as paying $179 and $209 isn't too big a difference, and I would still consider it to be a $200 range printer. But this will make the Tronxy Crux 1 the king of budget mini 3D printers. If you are interested in this machine, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.